A copyrighted program transcribed and dedicated to the prevention of crime. Calling all cars, attention all cars, broadcast 253 regarding a murder. Investigate at once. That is all. Gordon. Crimes of passion are usually committed by amateurs who think themselves more than a match for the incisive thinking, experienced law officer. This type of criminal will spend much time and effort in planning a cover-up for his crime. He really thinks he is a master criminal, but forgets just one little thing. There is no such criminal. There is no perfection in crime, just as there is no perfection in any human effort. Some trace of the crime is always left uncovered. Some bit of evidence is always exposed to the keen eye of the investigating officer. And once he cites it and fits it into the puzzle of the crime, the criminal is as good as under arrest. We now present a case in point of the foregoing assertion, a case founded on fact drawn from law enforcement authority records, the case of the barking dog. out there. Oh, it's you. What have you got that rifle for? Hey, don't point it at me. Stop it, I tell you. Listen, I know you don't like me, but don't do that. You'll hang. You can't get away with anything like that. Put that gun down. I'll give you anything you want, even money. Please don't. Why don't you say something? Stop pointing that gun! <laughs> Speaking, I should say it was uh, nighttime. All right, I want to know what time it is. What do you want to know the time for? I want to know if it's time to go home. But the dance isn't over. Well, you tell me all what... All right, all right. Five after eleven. Well, let's go. This place is getting on my nerves. You were anxious enough to get here. What's the matter with you tonight? There's nothing the matter with me tonight. Are you going to take me home or aren't you? Okay. Where's Jane? Send her out to the car. Then you knew what time it was. Well, what do you mean by that crack? Oh, nothing. I just can't figure you out sometimes. Well, don't try to figure me out. I'm going to get Rex. That's another thing. Have you ever brought that dog along for? I don't know. I've got dog hairs all over You me. can get them off. It's nice of the garage man to let us tie him in here. Rex, keep quiet. I suppose you'll crawl all over us all the way home. Wouldn't mind if it was a poodle, but a police dog. He crawls over me, too, don't he? Yeah, if I had my way, we'd tie him on the back of the car and see how fast he can run. Oh, still, Rex. Oh, still, I get this rope untied. There. Now get down, Rex. Get down. Get down, you or I'll... Don't you kick him. He'll bite you. Oh, the ugly cur would at that. 
Well, now we'll have to get the kids from the picture show. They won't be out until 12. Well, you'll have to go in and find them. Why don't you? They're your kids. You know my eyes aren't good enough to see anything in a dark place like that. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't let your husband bring you to the dance. After that ride, I'm too tired to get out. If you ever bring that dog oh, again... Oh, stop harping about that. You children stay in the car a minute. Dan, you go in and see if my husband's still up. Of course he is, Mother. The light's still on in the kitchen. Well, go ask him to come out for a minute, Dan. Why don't you go ask him? He's your husband. Oh, do what I tell you. I well, I want to look at the moonlight. Don't be crying out loud. I think you're nuts. Your old man's going to think so, too, when I ask him to come out and look at the moonlight with you. <laughs> see, it's a swell night, isn't it, Mother? Yeah. You better go tie up the dog, Jane. Why? Is anybody coming? No, but tie him up anyhow. But why? Do what I tell you. Well, all right, Mother, but you needn't get so excited. Mildred, come here, quick. What do you want? What's the matter? Come here, make the kids stay in the car. The children stay there. What's the matter, Dan? Dan, is anything wrong? Where's Mr. German? Isn't he in there? No, he's not in here. Something else is. What is it, Dan? What is it? Look. On the floor there. <gasps> it's blood. Something's happened to him. Something terrible, I know it. I uh, guess we'd better look around. You got a flashlight? Here, there's one in the drawer. You want to come with me? Yeah, I got to, Dan. I've just got to. All right. It looks bad. Dan, you were at the dance all evening, weren't you? You didn't go out, did you? Of course not. Danced every dance with you, didn't I? Yeah, sure. And lots of people saw you there, didn't they? Sure. Hey, listen... Do you mean that people might think that I... I don't know, Dan. I'm scared. Yeah, so am I. Look, something's been dragged along here. Looks like it was a body. How do you know it was a body? I don't know what it was. Do you? Of course I don't. Look, it was dragged through the break in the fence here. Yeah. Over this furrowed ground. What's that out there? That's it. It's him. I can't look, Dan. Tell me quick. Is he dead? Yeah. Well, he's dead, all right. Gonna tell the kids tonight. I forgot about them. You take them into a hotel in town, Dan. I'll phone the sheriff. Yeah, you phone the sheriff, and when he gets here, you tell him where I went and tell him I'll come right back, because if I don't come back, they'll come and get me. In response to a frantic telephone call from the wife of the murdered man, Sheriff Harry Patterson and Deputy Melvin Floor sped to the ranch. They were greeted by the vicious growling of the dog Rex. Sounds like a mighty vicious dog. The wonder didn't go after the killer. It's an angle. If it wasn't tied up, it proves the dog knew the guy that killed German. Hey, wait a minute. Even if it was tied up, its barking should have warned him. So the dog must have known the murderer. That's right. I'll we'll have to ask about that. Yeah, funny set of footprints leading off into the dark there. I can find out where the tracks lead to tomorrow. Uh, here's the body. Doesn't look like there was any struggle. There have been a lot of struggle somewhere else, though. We'll find that out when we get in the house. Throw your flashlight down here. Okay. Hmm. There are a lot of footprints. There's a set of prints that have been made by somebody dragging their feet. Must have been a cripple. Uh-uh. Cripple couldn't drag this body. Whoever made those tracks scuffed his feet deliberately. Whoever pulled this job was smart. Or thought he was. Looks like that lets the wife out. Doesn't let anybody out. Turn that light a little closer down here. There's a bullet hole in this man's throat. Uh-oh. Here's something. What have you found? Look at the back of this fellow's neck. There's been a rope around it. Here's some of the fibers still clinging to the flesh. We'll just take them along to compare with any ropes we happen to pick up. We'll probably find the ropes bloody, too. Yeah, let's go in the house. I want to talk to Mrs. German. You know, I can't figure out about that dog. It just doesn't make sense that a guy would sit in the house while that dog was raising so much cane. I've been thinking about that. We'll find out in just a minute. Hey, wait a minute. What's that on the ground down there? Huh? Hmm. A man's watch. The crystal broken. Let me just take this along. Huh. The hands are bent and it stopped at about 9.35. That fixes the time he got it or was dragged down the steps here. Please, please don't cry, Mom. Uh, we, uh, we know how badly you feel about this, Mrs. German, but in order to apprehend the murderer of your husband, we've got to ask you to tell us all you can. Now, do you recognize this watch, Mrs. German? It is. We found him out there. Mother, please go lie down. 
I'll tell them what they want to know, and I'll come into you as soon as I can. Did your father have any enemies? No. Not, not a one in the world. Have you found any signs of robbery? No. We found his wallet here on the kitchen floor, and the money's still in it. Just tell us everything that's happened this evening. All right. Well, you see, Father didn't feel like going to the dance. So Dan Phelps took Mother and me. He's coming back here as soon as he leaves my brother and sister at the hotel in town. We had a good time at the dance, and long, long about 11 o'clock, I guess, we left and picked up the children. They'd gone to the show. Then we drove home. When we got here, we saw the light on in the kitchen, but Dad wasn't in the house. We tied up the dog. We'd taken him to the dance with us and started looking for Dad. Then then they found him out there in the field. So, well, Mother phoned you right away, and well, I, I guess that's about everything that's happened until you got here. So you took the dog to the dance with you? Yes. Why did you do a thing like that? Well, he has an awful nasty habit of running after the car. He did it tonight, and we didn't want him to get lost, and... It was too late to bring him back, so we just took him in the car. Huh. Now, just suppose, Miss German, that that dog had been here instead of at the dance. Uh, would he attack an intruder or bark at him? Well, the point is, he growled at us. He didn't know us. But would he have barked at someone uh, he knew if he had been here? Oh, yes, yes. He's vicious with everyone except the family. Oh, vicious with everyone, huh? James, I'm feeling better now. What, what were you saying? We were asking about the dog. I understand he's a good watchdog. Oh, yes. I had Jane tie him up so he wouldn't bother you. Oh, so he wouldn't bother us. Yes. I'm glad you did that, Mrs. German. Mighty glad. Now, uh, Jane, will you tell us again just what happened when you got home from the dance and got out of the car? Oh, certainly. I'll tell them, Jane. No, no, let your daughter tell us. Go ahead, Jane. Well, Mother asked Dan to go in the house for Father, and then she asked me to tie Rex up. So he wouldn't bother us. In other words, Mrs. German, you knew we were coming out here before you found your husband's body. You knew someone had murdered him. No, no, that's not true. Mother, what did they mean? That's not the way it happened, I tell you. How did it happen, then? It wasn't that way. It was... Oh, I can't remember. You know plenty about this. Now, tell us the truth. Who did it? I don't know. I don't know a thing about it. I don't! I don't! I don't! With the evidence of the murdered man's watch to mark the hour when his dead body was dragged from the kitchen, supported by the evidence of the coroner's report that German had been dead not more than two hours, Sheriff Patterson and his deputies began checking the stories told by the dead man's family. A fingerprint in blood on the kitchen floor was photographed. The deadly bullet was proved to have come from a 22 caliber rifle. Several days later in the sheriff's office, Patterson confers with Flaw. Oh, so Mildred spent $60 for clothes the day before her husband was killed. That's interesting. Sort of unusual for a ranch wife to spend that kind of money. Did you check on the rest of their alibis? Yeah, they're okay. They were at the dance before 9.35 and stayed there all evening. The kids were at the movies. What did you find out about this Dan Phelps that was with her? Well, his record's clean. Well-known, well-liked. According to the neighbors, German was plenty stingy. Never gave his wife any money, and the kids went around and made over clothes. I wonder where she got that money. Why don't you ask her? Oh, I've questioned her every day. She shut up like a clam. If we could find the guy that gave her that dough... We'd have the murderer. You don't suppose Phelps gave it to her? Ah, uh, he never had $60 at once in his life. I'm going to let him go. The other prisoners are going to miss him, though. He keeps them entertained with his imitations. Well, personally, I'm a little fed up with his screwball imitations. I believe Mrs. German's covering up something. That dog episode worries me. Yeah, it doesn't make sense for a couple of women dressed for a dance to load a big dog like that in the car and take him along. Well, it's not exactly usual for a middle-aged married woman to be running around at dances with a guy half her age, either. Some of the gossip I've picked up indicates that this fellow Phelps used to room with the German family. Hmm. He never told us about that. Why don't we bring her in and talk to her about it? It's a good idea. They're both out in the next office. You go out and send Phelps in here. Leave the door open so Mildred German can hear us. What are you going to do? I'm going to try something. Okay. Come in, Dan. Sit down. How do you feel? Oh, all right, I guess. Have a cigarette? Thanks. I sure need one. Phelps, I'm jailing you on more than suspicion. You can't take him. You can't arrest him. He didn't kill John. He never killed my husband. You just pulled his son to see if there was anything between him and me. I love him. Sure I do. John German was a drunken beast. But Dan never killed him. He never did it. I swear he didn't. How do you know? You know we weren't at home when John was killed. None of us. No, not even the dog. But we'll find out who did it and why. <laughs> While 
While Sheriff Patterson and Undersheriff Money checked every available lead in town, Deputy Floor was busy in the community surrounding the German home, running down clues and questioning neighbors about possible enemies of the slain men. At last, late in the afternoon, Floor called the office, and Sheriff Patterson sped to the German farm. Well, that's all excitement, Mel. I believe I've got a lead on that noose for you. You mean the rope that was around German's neck? Yeah, I'm pretty positive it's the same rope. I've compared the strands we found on German's neck with this rope, and it appears to be the same. Here, take a look. Hmm. It does look like it, doesn't it? And those stains there. I'd say they're blood stains. Mel, I believe you've really found something this time. Where'd you find this rope? Right over there in those bushes. I followed those dragging tracks out this way, and the rope was lying under a bush by the fence. I found it right back of that shack over there. Uh, who lives in it? An old fellow named Williams. Happy Williams. <laughs> Who's he? Well, from what I can find out from the neighbors, he's been living here for years. Knows practically everybody. Know the Germans? Yeah, according to reports. That's really how I happened to be over this way. I was going to stop by and talk to Williams, but after I found the rope, I didn't go. I yeah. called you. Yeah, that's a better idea. After all, this rope may not be the one we're looking for. Well, I don't know who's crazier, Williams or his neighbors. Why so? Well, he's silly, but as kind-hearted as they come. Well, that is being crazy in this day and age. But the crazy idea that people have about him is that he's got lots of money hoarded. Yeah, they say that about every hermit. I talked to several people who say they saw him flash a roll that'd choke a cow. Why, why? Well, let's take a visit over to see our hermit friend. Well, it'll be like visiting a branch bug house if the inside's anything like the outside of the dump. Maybe he's got another piece of rope, and I hope a twenty-two rifle. If he has, we'll borrow it. Typical hermit shack. I never saw one. It looks even more dilapidated than I imagined. And that's saying something. Howdy, boys. Who might you be looking for? Are you happy, William? Yeah, sure. That's me. Well, we're looking for you. Oh, you don't see. I ain't had a visitor for nigh on to three years. <laughs> Uh, you sure you ain't looking for somebody else? Yes, we're sure. Uh, do you mind if we come in for a minute? We have a few questions to ask you. Oh, sure. Come on in. Make yourself to hum. <laughs> uh, what there is of it. And uh, uh, any questions you ask will be gratefully received, as the saying goes. Hey, what did you put that heavy chain on the door for? Well, that, that's to keep the ghost out. Oh, I see. Yes, sir. They can walk right through the door, but <laughs> they can't get by that chain. Well, uh, where do these ghosts come from? Oh, ghosts don't come from no place. And they ain't going no place. <laughs> What'd be the use? <laughs> When they got there, they'd still be a ghost. Well, you've got something there. Yeah. Say, who are these ghosts, or who were they? Oh, oh, oh. mostly gals that I, I loved. <laughs> One time or t'other, <laughs> they're hating me because I wouldn't marry them. Oh, they're all female ghosts? No. No, sometimes their husbands come belly aching around. <laughs> uh, well, you ought to have a rifle to protect yourself. Oh, no. No, no. No, not me. If a rifle went off, it might hurt something. Happy, why did you give Mildred German $60 last week? Is that all I give her? Oh, I should have given her more. Sometimes I think I'm uh, getting to be a miser. Well, then you did give it to her. Sure, sure. I, I give lots of people money. Uh, uh, you, you want some, boys? It's right here in this box. Uh, there. Uh, there you are, boys. J just help yourself. Say, that's a young fortune. Where'd you get all this money? I just sent for it. <laughs> Got this whole sack for a dollar. You, well, well, I'll be... This is stage money. Stage money? Uh-huh. Hey, what's the idea of that? Well, I ain't so tempted to <laughs> spend that. Uh, listen, Happy. Huh? Why did you kill John German? <laughs> Anything for a laugh, I always say. Where's the gun you shot him with? Oh, I didn't use no gun to shoot him. How did you kill him, then? Uh, oh, why don't you tell me? <laughs> Maybe we will sometime, Happy. But right now, we're in a hurry. We'll come back and see you some other time. All right, boys. I'll be waiting for you. So long, Happy. So long. Well, that's running into a blank wall. Maybe we didn't run into a blank wall, Mel. 
Give me some more details about what people think of Happy. Well, nobody knows anything definite. They just say he's balmy, silly, nuts. Uh, what's the most outstanding thing they say about him? That he's harmless. He's always telling people not to hurt anything. That's what I've been thinking about. That's what interests me most. What do you mean? I mean, I don't think he's as crazy as he's pretending to be. People that are a little nuts can be awful smart and cunning when they want to be. You mean you think he's just nuts about the subject of not hurting anyone? That's it, exactly. You mean you suspect Happy? I mean just that. Oh, I think he's completely nuts. If he is, I'll be too before we're through with him. Let's get back to the office. I want to talk to Mildred German. Sit down, Mildred. What do you want? Mildred, you want the murder of your husband caught, don't you? Thought you'd made up your mind I did it. Would you be willing to help us catch the man who really did? I don't know. I couldn't do much. Maybe. Personally, I think Dan Phelps is the bird who killed your husband. You don't seem like the kind of woman who'd have her husband murdered. If you won't help us, it looks bad for you. What do you want me to do? Mel, you're pretty good at imitating voices, aren't you? Fair. Think you could imitate John German's voice? I guess so. Why? Tonight, we're going to pay a visit to Dan Phelps' cell. You really suspect Dan, you're nuts. Happy said he... Huh? Happy said he what? Why did you take that dog with you to the dance, Mildred? Well, Happy said the dog would bite him and he was afraid... Uh, afraid of what? I don't know. What's Happy got to do with this? I don't know. So that's the way it is, eh? That's the way it is. Okay, lady, we'll do it the hard way, then. Lock her up, Mel. Looks like we won't need your imitations. I think we'll call on our friend Happy Williams. <laughs> Don't worry, I will. Howdy, fellas. What brings you uh, bird dogging around these parts? Hello, Happy. Don't you remember us? We're officers. Hey, you look just like a couple of fellas that was here a while ago. We're the same fellas. How about inviting us in? Sure, sure. Come on in. Set a spell. I thought we'd come over and uh, get acquainted with some of those ghosts we've been hearing about. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. They'll be right pleased to make your acquaintance. Don't they uh, ever scare you, Happy? They used to, kind of, but that is when we were strangers. They make right tolerable company now. You don't think they'll be around tonight, do you? Or do they run on regular schedule? Nope. You just look around and there they are. Hey, look, 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 look. look. Here's one. J just went by the window. Looks like a new one. Probably John German's ghost. John German? My goodness, when did he die? You know when, Happy. How should I know? Well, where'd you hide the rifle you shot him with, Happy? Oh, no. It ain't polite to say things like that. You fellas got a wrong idea. Uh, you're a great lover, aren't you, Happy? <laughs> How'd you know that? Oh, the neighbors told us. They told us a lot of things. <laughs> Mildred German told us some things, too. Hey, what'd she tell you? You're in love with her, aren't you, Happy? Huh? That's why you wanted John out of the way, isn't it? That's why you were afraid of the dog, isn't it? Oh, it ain't so. Now, there ain't a word of truth in it. Keep talking like that, I won't like it. That's why you killed him, isn't it? Dag nabbit, will you listen to reason? I couldn't kill John without hurting him, could I? And I can't stand to see nobody hurt. I just can't stand it. The only thing that don't make me happy, and I just got to be happy. You hurt John German plenty. Oh, don't talk like that. I can't stand it. You'll have to, Happy. You can't fool me. He's a ghost now, and ghosts can't feel nothing. You're right about that, but live folks can. What do you mean by that? I was thinking of how Mildred German's going to feel when they hang her. No, no, they can't do that. You, you can't hang her. Mildred German killed her husband. She'll have to pay for I it. I won't let you do it. I'll stop you just like I stopped him. Hey, watch it, Sheriff. Give me the rifle. Give it to me. Uh, put the bracelets on him, Mel. All right. I've got him. That's all we wanted, Happy. We'll prove this is the rifle that fired the shot into John German's throat. Uh, all right, fellas. You got me. I did it. I shot him. He was a lousy hound. I loved her. I give her the only money she ever had. I loved her. She was a beautiful woman. And a good woman. And you were fooling us by pretending to be crazy and believing in ghosts. Yeah, sure I was. But when you said they was going to hurt her, I just couldn't stand it. Did she tell you to kill her husband? She said she was going to the dance. 
So I told her to take the dog along, and while I was gone, I'd make my little visit. He cheated her like a dog, I tell you, and he died like a dog. <laughs> Just a moment, you will hear the summation of our story. Happy Williams and Mildred German were both indicted for first-degree murder. Mildred German as an accessory before the fact. Both were tried for the crime. Although Mildred German denied that she had lured her fellow criminal to kill her husband, she was nevertheless found guilty and sentenced to prison. Happy was found insane and was committed to the state hospital for the insane. This planned murder proves once more that crime does not pay. Cars, attention all cars, cancellation broadcast 253. Suspects now in custody. That is all. Gordon.